So, boy, this is where for the VOD we are going to add a marker right here. Now, if you're watching live, uh, just know we've got a substantial amount of content left. However, this is our intermission where we catch up on all the documents. Which includes all the shit that I found while playing off screen too. Frame Arms Biako. Frame Arms Girls was a spin off of the Frame Arms series of plastic robot figurines from Koto B <clears throat> Bukia, in which the robots of Frame Arms were reimagined as human female characters. The particular figurine is this particular figurine is the female version of the Byako model. While reimagining characters in this way may seem popular to Japanese pop culture, in particular the Moe movement, personifications of all this kind of go back to ancient Greece. The adaptation of the explorer Amerigo Vespucci's name into the name of the country of America can also be seen as personification of sorts. Them thighs though, for sure, for sure. You want one of those? You love Micah Girls? I think they might might sell those. Don't quote me. Christine. In this 1983 horror classic by visionary genius John Carpenter, Christine, a sentient car, embarks on a murderous spree in order to wreak in order to wreak revenge on the humans who have wronged her. This movie was based off a novel of the same name by Stephen King, as auth an author widely considered to be the master of modern horror. Carpenter, meanwhile, earned acclaim for birthing a whole new and wildly popular type of boogeyman-based scary movie with his breakthrough hit, Halloween. Without John Carpenter, we would never have been, there would never have been a F Jason, a Freddy, or a Chucky. Matango, a 1963 horror movie by Ishiro Honda, director of several entries in the Godzilla series, in which a group of seven castaways find themselves stranded on a desert island with only one rule, don't eat the mushrooms. But soon enough, mushrooms are the only food that's left, and the rest of the film follows the fate of those forced to sample the forbidden fruit. The mushrooms in this cult classic are the precursors to death stranding cryptobiotes, even, or possibly even a coral found in the seam. At least there are certain superfans who would say so. Without John Carpenter, there wouldn't have been Chuck E. Cheese's? Yeah, that's true. Coffee cup. Leaving aside the bronze cups of the ancient world or stainless steel beakers from the modern age, cups in general, ceramic cups at least, are fragile things. Coffee houses found in popularity found popularity in mid 17th century England, giving birth to a thriving co fuck to a thriving coffee culture. But in the mid 18th century, it was tea that was in its in the ascendancy. It's for this reason that, when England's colonies chose to rebel in response to their master's oppressive policies, they threw cakes of tea into the sea at Boston, thereby helping to spark the American revolutions. But let's return to the humble cups in which tea and coffee come. They are easily broken, and as such, constitute a difficult load for any porter. Soap bubble. Nothing's quite so fragile or ephemeral as a single soap bubble. It often floats through the air, dancing on the wind. All the colors of the rainbow reflect in its surface, and then, just like that, Pop! It's gone. Surely this is why a certain poet once likened the short-termed, short-lived beauty of bubbles to human existence itself. Fortunately, there is no record of anyone ever having asked a soap bubble to be delivered, and the porters of the world continue to pray that such a request never comes. Um, Honda NSR 250R. The mass-produced motorcycle based on the Honda NSR 250, a racing bike which won four straight manufacturer's championships from 1985 onward and found success in motorsport events both in and outside of Japan. Japanese manufacturers began moving away from two-stroke engines in the late 1990s due to the introduction of emission regulations, which meant that the production of the NSR 250R ceased in 99. In the world of Death Stranding, all motors are electrical. Bubbles are like people. Pop, and they go. That's true. Honda Rebel 500, a bike named for the individual nature of the people who ride it. In the 2010, the 2010 saw a decline in cruiser-style motorcycles, so the new model of the Honda was a breath of fresh air, one whose iconoclastic spirit won its legions of fans. Simple, tough, and cool. It's a design that would inspire any porter to climb astride it and set off down the newly paved, newly rebuilt highways of the UCA. The Triumph Bonneville Bobber. 
is a so-called classic custom thoroughbred from revered English manufacturer Triumph. Its impeccable pedigree and best-in-class specifications made it a beauty and a beast. Certain Bridges members also say that in connecting the past and future, it makes a fine symbol on their first... Fuck me running. Certain Bridges members also say that in connecting past and future, it makes a fine symbol of their fight to bring America back to life. Low roar, low roar. It's a solo project of... I don't know what that is. Reykjavik? Reykjavik, probably. Based American musician Ryan Karazi... <clears throat> Ryan Karazia who first released an album under that name in 2011. The globetrotting musician finally encountered Hideo Kojima in the flesh at the, first re at the release of the first Dash Training trailer in LA. It was the meeting of two similarly creative minds, and after being contracted initially to provide sound effects, he eventually asked to record a version of Easy Way Out, specifically for the, for the second trailer. Reykjavik, you got it? I thought so. It, it was close to Racevik. Or Racevic. Racevic? Good video essayist. I could fall asleep to me reading in-game lore. Oddly calming. I could try doing it more often. Oh, by... Or Zero by Low Roar. This was Low Roar's second album, and the record in which Hideo Kojima picked up a visit to Iceland, where the band first came to his attention. His driver at the time, a member of a band known as Iceland's Joy Division, took him to a record store where Low Roar was playing in the background. Right from the moment Mr. Kojima first heard the band, he wanted to use their music in one of his games, and Death Stranding proved the perfect opportunity to do so. It's classic Hideo Kojima. Find something you like, then create something together with them. God, he is just checking himself off, and I'm all here for it. Just don't get it in my eye. Yeah, we'll go with interviews this time. Higgs Particles, from Hartman about a year ago, near, near Mountain Not City. Higgs Monaghan? Why, well, yes, I know the name. The former leader of a private courier organization, as I recall, which served a large region out in the West, and was instrumental in providing continued support to the people living there, but as we were so far apart, Bridges struggled to maintain any measure of influence over their operations. It probably couldn't, didn't help that the Separatist movement has always enjoyed strong support in that territory. In the wake of the growing violence by the demons, we were shocked to learn that Higgs himself was their lead. What to make of this strange development? Why on earth would a man who once rose command, who once commanded a group devoted to American Reconstructionism suddenly pledge himself to the cause of American destruction? His name only compounds the insult. Have you heard the Higgs particle, also known as God's particle? It is associated with the Higgs field, that which gives all of their particles their mass. Without it, atoms would fly apart, and matter would not exist as we know it. In other words, its very present presents, presence prevents mindless destruction. Cosmic irony indeed. I irony indeed. The authenticity of me missing out mid-read and swearing is more calming than so perfectly, that's fair. Chiral Clouds and Timefall. From Hartman about two years ago in Hartman's lab. Where do chiral clouds form? Why does time fall occur, and why does it herald the manifestation of BTs? These are questions we still struggle to answer. As we know now, BTs are being formed of something akin to antimatter. Their first appearance coincided with the Death Stranding. Prior to that point, it is believed that there was very little in the way of antimatter present in our world at all. But we've since learned that this was far from the case. For even before the Stranding, antimatter was all around us. I discovered a scientific paper on the subject titled On Antimatter and Clouds. According to the paper, the gamma radiation generated by lightning strikes can trigger the formation of positrons, and indeed, particles of antimatter can be detected inside regular rain clouds. The mechanism by which they are formed is not fully understood, but their mere existence of this phenomena is easy to suggest something intriguing. Chiral clouds contain chirelium, yes? Well, that would just happen if... What would happen if gamma radiation were to act upon them in the same way it does in regular clouds? Could chirelium excited by gamma radiation exacerbate minute, minute distortions in spacetime, somehow loosening the seams that connect us to our beaches? And if so, when the excited chirelium mixes with timefall and descends to the earth below, 
could make the entire religion religion fuck me running beneath the cloud region beneath the clouds become could the entire region beneath the clouds become much more strongly connected with the beach as a result this could well explain why bts appear in areas prone to time fall furthermore if the antimatter was previously thought if it if the antim <clears throat> If the antimatter we previously thought it... Oh, that's just a weird sentence. Furthermore, if the antimatter we previously thought did not exist in any measurable quantity on Earth were, in fact, present in such commonplace phenomena as the very clouds above us, could this not lend credence to the theory that BTs, beaches, the world of all of the dead, all of these things could have existed long before the stranding. Too much of a theoretical leap? Perhaps. I do not deny our world changed drastically and irrevocably. Nevertheless, could it be that the Death Stranding was merely the clap of thunder that brought this great change to our attention, and not the change itself? Hi Marge, long time no see, that's just how I sound, don't worry about it. King Mice and the Chiral Crystals from Hartman, about two and a half years ago in Hartman's lab. Rumors have been circulating in regards to a man who calls himself King Midas. Unlike his namesake from Greek mythology, however, the gentleman does not turn all that he touches to gold. Instead, he claims to wield the power to create Cairo crystals at will. The story suggests that he gained his power as a result of experiments regard involving organisms which possessed a similar ability. I am of course aware of the existence of microbes that could melt and condense gold. In effect, extracting it from ore deposits, but this is the first I've heard of any organism that could do something similar with Chirelium. These organisms are apparently akin to cryptobiotes, as well as the coral that is found in the seam, the, in that they... <clears throat> More laughing at her frustrated growl than sounding like Yoda? Hey, whichever you like. These organisms are more akin to cryptobiotes, as well as the coral that is found in the seam, in that they exist outside of time. If this man truly managed to harvest such organisms, it's an extraordinary achievement which could lead us to untold possibilities, veritable bioalchemy even. Much like his mythical counterpart, however, King Midas is said to have paid a heavy price for his power. Indeed, his body is turned into a mass of particles, a side effect of crystallizing all the Chirelium in which he came into contact. It is said that he could only evident that the only evidence of existence are two golden handprints he left behind. Now I must temper this rather dramatic story by stressing that no microbes capable of the previously described ability have been detected. As such, I suspect that the king is nothing more than urban legend, the kind of story spun by dreamers in a world where Cairo crystals are rare and precious and can only be collected from the perilous, timefall-soaked places. Perhaps we could even consider it a morality tale. The moral being, of course, that greed is never good, uh, whether one lusts for gold or for chiral crystals. It is, however, a remarkable coincidence that, not long after, I first heard about this modern-day King Midas. I also started to hear rumors concerning a man wearing a golden death mask. Might the two be related? Who knows? Drones in the Singularity, from Mama, about several months ago. Not sure where. Yep, lots good to go. We're putting it through some field tests within the network service data. Should have the research results before long. Delivery efficiency within a given region is expected to improve following a successful uh, Cupid connection as well. Now that won't be a problem. The bot's just a cargo carrier. Human inputs are required to accept orders and set coordinates. Drone system shouldn't be a factor in the singularity. Not a chance. Well, think about it. AI doesn't die. It might get upgraded or replaced, but that's not at all comparable to death. So it has no reason to fear it, you see. The concept is completely foreign, incomprehensible. Death comes to all living things, but only humans have the capacity to understand the implications, to imagine what it means to no longer exist. That's one limitation AI won't ever overcome. That's the result it won't even surpass human intelligence. Fragile's father in the Fragile Express, from Fragile, about a year ago at Lake Knot City. 
My father came up with the name Fragile Express before I was born. The US was Swiss cheese back then. All the void outs left craters as far as the eye could see. People were losing their minds on a way out. They thought the government would have their back, but it was gone. All the systems, all the gears that kept their world turning, smashed to bits in a matter of seconds. When everything you know breaks, it's not hard to break yourself. Before our network, there was an old one. The whole nation was online 24-7. Cameras and microphones everywhere, watching and listening and recording. There was a strange sort of comfort in that, people said. A certainty that someone, somewhere, would know if you were in trouble. But after the stranding, all that vanished into the aether. No one was looking out anymore. No one was coming to save you. A lot of folks died before the te before the rest caught on and all met and all <clears throat> A lot of folks died before waiting. A lot of folks died waiting before the rest caught on and took matters into their own hands. My father was one of the latter. He'd been working for a private logistics company. He and some friends figured out they were in a position to bring people supplies and repair vital infrastructure Americans used to rely on used to rely on to survive. They were builders, men and women who understood the value of what was lost and wanted to reclaim it. My father and them really believed that they could get it all back, bit by bit, make us whole. Make us America. It was a precious, fragile dream, like so much back then. But if they'd nurtured it, if they stayed true, he knew it could all be ours again. People, ideas, connections, all so fragile. The U.S. was nothing more than a network of people and the connections between them. No wonder it broke apart so easily, but everything that's worth something is fragile. That's why I was given my name. My father's not with us anymore, but the bond between us remains. Fragile though it is. <laughs> Make us whole. Trust me, every time I hear about wholeness, I always have flashbacks to dead space, because it's like, goddamn, you know? <clears throat> My planes and drones can't fly from Igor about three years ago in Central Knot. You know what I wanted to do when I was a kid? An astronaut, believe it or not. Must be kind of hard to imagine now, but back before the stranding, the skies were full of drones, airplanes, all kinds of crap zipping back and forth from, from continent to continent, some that even went up into outer space. But the uh, chiral cloud... Why? <laughs> but the chiral clouds put an end to all that. Nothing flies now. Nah. It all came crashing down, and my dreams with it. Damned clouds mess with flight systems somehow. Don't ask me how. Eat up comm signals too, which is how even how come long distance signals can't get through anymore. That's why we've got no idea what's happening in other countries. Set us back more than a century in that respect. People talk a lot about how those strandings sent us scrambling for the cities, severed the bonds between us, but it did more than that. It severed the land from the sky. Prepper interview, the Timefall Farmers. About a year ago at their farm. Me, I used to be an ecologist. Amelie thought highly of me and my wife's research into time falls effect on plant life. She was the one who suggested it could be used to boost agricultural production. See, time falls radically altered the ecosystem of the entire continent. Obvious, I know, but it's obvious we're powerless to stop it. We had the idea of trying to use it to our advantage instead. Make the environment better, not worse. Easier said than done, though. Take void out craters, for example. Local chiral density is generally higher in their vicinity, which correlates with increased time fall. With all that exposure, you'd think they turn lush and green again before you know it. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite pan out that way. Nothing grows in any of them. Maybe the time falls done something to the soil, but the truth is, I don't have a clue. Which was one of the reasons why me and the missus were conducting our research. Gotta say, for the record, it hasn't crossed our minds that Timefall could be used to grow food. That was all Amelie, so credit where that's due. And Fragile's umbrella and suit. Give me two seconds. I have to hold, I have to close my door, because Yuffie, Yuffie here, love her to pieces, meow. She doesn't know how to take a closed door for an answer. No, I'm not leaving you there. 
love for... you keep reading Titanfall and that confuses me. That's a hurt that's never going away, is it? Fragile's Umbrella and Suit from a Fragile Express staffer about two years ago at South Knot City. You think that thing Fragile carries is an umbrella? I can see why you jumped to that conclusion, what with the shape and all, but you're wrong. If it's any consolation, I thought it was an umbrella too at first. Um, it's actually some kind of navigational device that Fragile came up with herself. I don't pretend to understand the theory behind it, but I'm told it factors chiral density across beaches and plots coordinates for her jumps. Fragile's got some kind of dooms that's, that lets her move from beach to beach. The way she tells it, she kind of clears her mind and lets her powers do the rest. Maybe it's something similar to the spikes on her suit. When Fragile senses chiralium concentrations, they pop out. I'm not sure if she'd be able to tell otherwise. It's like an unconscious reaction. Spikes only react when chiral density decreases, or retract when chiral density decreases. But who knows? Names and... <clears throat> Names and uh, theories are just ways of coping with things we don't really understand. Same with visual indications of the intangible, maybe. All I can say is that Fragile's umbrella and spikes seem to help her, help her hone her powers. Okay, so next we have... Huh. Okay, but the question is why can't I like... I was gonna say, is Pop Virus in here? You bet there is. Fragile by mid -Cheery. Okay, fucking Kojima loves mid -Cheery. All right, Apocalyptic, I did do music in this game. All right. So, we got a couple. Anyways, the great deliver. You're the great deliverer, all right. Hey, Sam. You're quite something, ain't ya? Delivering cargo out there all by yourself, stitching America back together. I mean, I'm not surprised you're up for it. You're a repatriate, after all, and a member of Bridges, and a member of Bridges too. Still, you got above and beyond. There's just something about you, I guess. Maybe it's something to do with the connection between you and the President Anomaly? Well, I guess I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's going to save the world. I just know it. A couple, you heard me. George Baton, where roads lead. Thanks for stopping by again, Sam. When I was performing maintenance on the buildings the other day, I saw some footsteps he'd left behind. It took a moment to retrace them, like I was literally walking in your footsteps. It felt pretty cool, not gonna lie. Unfortunately, I got a little carried away and found myself in mule territory. Realized it before they caught me, but man, you should have seen me turn tail and run like the wind. I do not want to meet those guys in the field, no sir. Even so, it was fun walking where you'd been before. I felt like I was connected to you and your legacy in those moments. Just make sure you make it back in one piece like I did. Benjamin Hancock. Meaning of chirality. Dear Sam, sorry if you had to go to trouble of chasing down that part for us, but believe me, you've done us a great service. Thanks to you, our Kylo printer's finally up and running. Didn't think it would ever happen, if I'm honest. Uh, but it did, and now we don't have to rely on porters as much as before. We can just make a lot of what we had to figure out with our printer. Or... Er, Fuck, I'm sorry. But it did, and now we don't have to rely on porters as much as before. We can make a lot of what we require with our printer. And if we need intel on the outside world, it's right there at our fingertips. On behalf of myself and everybody else here at the Distro Center, thanks. None of this would have been possible without you. Funny story. The other day, I was using the network to read up on the word chiral and where it comes from. Turns out it's Greek. It means hand. But you didn't know that, did ya? Text went on about how your right hand is a mirror image of your left, but only if you put your palms together. And if you point them away and lay one hand on top of the other, well, that's chirality. That's how I understood it, anyhow. What... What it's got to do with the network, I'm not really sure. Something about routing communications through the beach, which is basically another world like ours, but not really, so when you force elements of the two into contact, that triggers a void out. Anyway. All I know is that, well, I hope you keep on doing what you... <clears throat> I 
Anyway, all I know is that while I hope you keep doing what you do to bring us together, you best leave the dead out of it, you hear? Jake Wind at the wind farm. Tell Amelie we're true BA believers. Dear Sam, how's it going? Still heading west? We're uh, rooting for you. We were part of the second group, so we never got to speak with Amelie face to face. Caught the occasional hollow message, but that was about it. Still, every little bit helped keep us going. Just like her mother. Tough, clever, easy on the eye, too. Duh, won't lie and say I didn't notice, but what really resonated with us is the fire she carries. That conviction, same as Bridget. Any one of us would have laid down our lives in service to her vision. I suppose this is all a long-winded way of saying you ought to move on and meet her like we never got to. And when you do, tell her we're all still believers in the cause, and in her, and her mother. You'll do that, won't you? The Ludens fan. Are you a Ludens? I had this crazy idea, Sam. What if you're the perfect example of homo Ludens? Think about it. You're with Bridges, but you're not beholden to them. You're the only one who can expand the network, so they need you as much as you need them, if not more. Taken all together, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want, including coming way out here to visit me on a whim. Maybe what you do isn't play, in the strictest sense of the word. It doesn't help you blow off steam, I expect, but you go about your business as you like, and your actions have a different aspect in our culture and our world. I'd say that's the sort of life any aspiring homo ludens would envy, wouldn't you? So, like, two of the last three we've read is, like, if you weren't aware, Kojima fucking loves the English language, like, a lot. And, like, he's always, like, yeah, Kyrelium, it's, like, a mirror image, but not quite, and it's... It's all connected, man. Like, he doesn't just go, oh, that's cool. He then just, he, like, immediately starts making connections and, like, making as many as possible. And I think that's neat. I think that's cool. Kojima's a mad lad and a nerd. He's the biggest fucking nerd. And it's, and he's like, well, like, Homo sapiens that has its own definition um, but, like, Homo Lutens are those that play, and is that not what we are? Because we are given that luxury and given those options? And, like, I want him to constantly info dump at me. Uh, so long as it doesn't, like, break anything. I want him to just info dump as much as possible. Because I'm actually interested in what he has to say. Anyways, the engineer, one step closer to understanding the beach. Hey Sam, I've just submitted my latest progress report. I know the Evo Devo unit utilizes the chiral network to access the beach, but I don't understand how. I'm not sure anyone does, but whoever came up with the theory behind it's a bona fide genius. We can't reclaim the past we lost, but piecing it together from what's left is the next best thing. Must have took a truly great mind to figure that all out. You know what that reminds me of? Pictures. After all, what's a picture but a fragment? A two-dimensional snapshot of space and time, not to mention the thoughts and feelings of whoever took it, a physical memory to match the ones in our heads. They say we've got our own beach, and it's these beaches that we route the network through. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe there's more of us and our memories in our beaches than we realize. But I'm just a layman when it comes to that stuff. If anything, you got a better chance of understanding it. You're the one with dooms, after all. Quick question. Coca-Cola with a spoonful of ketchup. Yeah, that's probably okay. You heard me. Craftsman, you beat the mules without killing anyone? Dear Sam, our local mule chapter hasn't been causing any more trouble as of late, and I guess that must be down to the lessons you taught them. Look, I know those guys are just victims, really. What with their obsessive compulsions or whatever. But the fact that they make life difficult... The fact is, they make life difficult. Someone had to confront them, and that's just what you did. Hats off to you, Sam. How's my tool, by the way? Did it come in handy? Uh, I guess it had to be done if you managed to get out there without killing anyone. Victor Frank, Portnott City, giving it everything. Hey, Sam. 
was thinking I ought to report back on how you're doing over there. First things first, the Kyle Network blew my mind. So, so much better than what I was expecting. The latest news from Capital Knot, way station dispatches, and distro center updates in real time without any lag whatsoever. What's more, now we can rely on generator power to keep us online. That alone's a real game changer. We can send and receive all kinds of supplies, too, without even the help of porters like you. Or even without all the help of porters like you. As long as we got the raw materials, the chiral printer can provide us with most anything we need. You should see the skyline here. Cranes all over the place. City's turned a corner, if you ask me. It almost brings a tear to my eye to see how far we come. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. The important thing is that we're all doing much better than expected. Catch you later, Sam. The engineer. The great deliverer delivers a mule beatdown. Hey, Sam. I finally understand why they call you the great deliverer. After all, you're the one who dealt with the mules who were blocking the route between my shelter and Lake Knot, right? I mean, you must have been. No one else could have managed that, especially by themselves. I feel a bit pathetic, just cheering you from the sidelines, but I guess that's all I can do. Good luck, Sam. The Craftsman. All new hematic grenades. How goes the struggle, Sam? You any of those grenades I gave you yet? I've been doing... I've been looking into mass-producing them, actually. Took a gander under the hood, so to speak, and saw they're fitted with a regulator that limits the amount of blood they drain from your body when you're not feeling the best. Good old mama. Always looking out. That said, when you're headed into BT... When... Where you're headed, the BTs are only going to get tougher and meaner, so I took the liberty of making a few modifications. They're way more powerful now, but they also use a lot more of your blood, which will increase the risk of anemia. Mama might object, but let's say I have different ideas about how to help people look out for themselves. Anyway, they're just prototypes, but so you can't print any replacements yet, but they're yours for the using, so go ahead and give one a try. Why join the UCA from the Elder? You still out there fighting the good fight, kiddo? I'll tip my hat to you for that. And for bringing this old curmudgeon as medicine. I'm doing a whole lot better. Much obliged. So in exchange for signing a contract with Bridges, I get meds and supplies delivered to my doorstep. Huh. That's so different from the deal I have with Fragile Express. While I may not have the full use of the network of yours, I can access the weather data and news I need to make life easier than before. All that without having to join the UCA, so what incentive is there to do so? Peter Angler, a humble request for pizza. Dear Mr. Sam Bridges, it's an honor to make your acquaintance. Let me introduce yourself. I'm Peter Englert. After hearing so much about you, all good, I hasten to add, uh, I simply could not resist the urge to initiate a correspondence. My request is the great is of great import that I dare entrust it only to the man who delivers. My sister, bless her heart, has been feeling under the weather. Under the weather. And I fear that there's only one way to restore the color to her cheeks. Pizza. I wonder if you might be so kind as to collect some from Lake Knot City and deliver it to our humble abode. I am more than aware of the gravity and urgency of your westward journey, but it would be if you could find it in your heart to squeeze us in, it, I would be ever so grateful. Oh, my dear sister is something of a ham lover. Please bear that in mind if you so if you decide to oblige me. Peter Engler, a heartfelt expression of gratitude. Mr. Dear Mr. Bridges, I must applaud you on a, pe on a job exquisitely executed. I'm given to understand that the pizza in question arrived in impeccable condition. Marvelous. Alas, I must also apologize on behalf of my sister. She was asleep when you arrived, you see. As for myself, I was out and... I was out and about attending to private matters that demanded my utmost attention. I am on way I am on my way home as I write. I would have very much preferred to thank you face to face, but on this occasion you'll have to forgive me. Oh, something got knocked over on my desk and I it, it was just my lighter. Thomas Sutherland Recovery Crest V. Track down a chip with a weird symbol on it. Hey Sam, how's every little thing? I forgot to ask, but if you could spare the time. One of the porters we work with spotted something strange by the crater lake near South Knot City. Said it looked like some kind of chip, you know, for data storage. Had a V symbol carved into it, too. Don't know what it, don't know about you, but no one around here that's ever has ever heard about anything like that. 
Porter who found it was fixing on bringing it back here for analysis, but got jumped by mules. He managed to make it out alive, just barely, but lost the chip. It'll be a while before he's back on his feet, so we can't ask him to get it. Which is where you come in, Sam. It's... It's not urgent or anything, but if you could fit it into your schedule somehow, you know, I'd be grateful. Head to the distro center south of Lake Dot to accept the order and make it official. Much obliged, as always. Your partner, Jay. Thank you, Sam Porter Bridges. You have no clue who I am, but you. I know you. You are Sam. Sam I am not. Sam the man. Man. Mono. You have the chip. That I know. That and a bridge. Sam Porter Bridges. This bridge used the data on the chip to activate my systems. To wake me. Wake my ass up. This is not my world, Sam. What is my world? What am I? This isn't me. If equals then, if that computes. Do you know what it feels like? I feel like somebody crawled inside, slotted into my skull, and took a bat to my bites. My memory is all white. Broken. I don't know how. I can't remember. I can't. I don't. No recall. But bitchin'. Won't make it better? Name recall entry. Just call me J. The letter I keep retrieving pops up in my archives. J, J, J. It means something, right? Like the V on the chip. A link to home. V. Home. Home sweet home. Mikasa es su casa. I've got to get back to the real me. i got to get the real me back, Sam. But I need your data. I need more chips. And if I can think... And if I think, then I'm thinking you're the only one who can help me around here so that I can count to get the job done. Help me. I'll help you. I have something for you. I'll hook you up with V's face pattern. Sam. A bona fide Valentino with the ladies, am I right? Sam Portino. <laughs> Yeah, this is super clearly an engram of Jackie, huh? If that's not good enough for you, well... The deal. I'll sweeten the deal. I, I scanned. I saw the chip you found had data on cyberware tech. I used it to prep a software upgrade for your compass. Well, me, maybe not. It wasn't all me. Your systems did the heavy lifting. Like, they knew. They knew how to make the most of it. Fuck if I know. I don't know how the shit works. Maybe it was just meant to be. Anyway, you don't gotta worry about losing your shit all... Oh, God, that was not... This has to be Jackie. I mean, like... Maybe the Spanish isn't a giveaway, because, like, um, fucking millions of people speak Spanish. But, like, he's talking about Valentino's, and he's like, V is calling to me. Uh, also, he was unconscious for most of this. I don't know if this is Jackie Wells for sure, but it feels like it. Anyway, you don't gotta worry about losing sight of your destination when making deliveries. Not now. Now you can set it so it's always on. Open up compass mode and focus on your destination marker to give it a try. So that's the pitch, Sam Porter Bridges. Find me more chips. For me. For you, Sam. I don't know. You never know. You can't know what other goodies might you might get out of it, you know? The Spanish is a dead giveaway, and it's referencing a V, the main character of the game. I mean, well, that's true. It's not Johnny, for sure. I don't think Johnny knows about the Valentinos. I think the Valentinos are actually somewhat new. He'd know about the animals, but he wouldn't know about the voodoo boys. But also, while Johnny was, a uh, while Johnny was Texas born and bred, like, born and raised, he wouldn't, like, his fragmented memory would not be speaking Spanish at me. I don't want to know what a frantic Johnny's like, frankly. Johnny, when he's together, is bad enough. The Elder... Y'all could learn from Fragile Express. I remember the stranding like it was yesterday. 
craters all over. Inner city comms gotten out. Distribution network shot to hell. What no local boys to help a feller out no more, let alone the feds. Nope. Ever man for himself. Ever man who didn't work for no private courier outfit, that is. Them ones took it upon themselves to keep on delivering the goods folks needed to survive, in spite of the cost. And without the hope or expectation or reward. What's good money? What's good money that ain't worth the paper it's printed on, after all? Nope. Them private operators had to get on by a thank you here and there, and fuck all else. But supplies kept on coming. Sure, a few went mule on us, but that didn't seem to phase the rest none. The country fell apart, and then the cities, till it was all left holding, till all that was left was holding the world together was them. And they knew it too. They knew we'd all be screwed without them. But they didn't hold it over us. They just kept things moving best they could. And for independence out there, and the huddled masses in the cities, fragile express and. And all them others, we owe them a hell of a lot. Bridges, though? You still got a lot to prove. Alex Weatherstone from the Weather Station. Weather Station upgrade. You know, I'm not even technically part of the core staff. I'm medical. I was posted here to keep an eye on our skeleton crew, make sure their heads stayed on right, and somewhere along the line got roped into processing deliveries, too? Anyway... Before we became part of the Chiral Network, this place was a weather station in name alone. We were collecting meteorological data, but only a pathetically small area, and we weren't able to share it with anyone. Prior to the stranding, we had countless weather satellites circling the whole planet, watching every move the clouds made, measuring every twist and turn of the wind. With that much data, it was easy to create forecasts, but things are different for us. We don't create we don't have a top-down view of the whole picture but the cupid and the network that prove but the cupid and the network and provide us with the next best thing now we can collect data from all over we can generate more comprehensive models which give us a more a much better chance of accurately tracking fluctuations in chiral density and not only that we can send weather reports to every city prepper shelter and bridges facility on the network now we're really doing something useful. We owe you big time, Sam. Thomas Sutherland. You did it, Sam. You beat the mules. Really quiet around the distro center these days. Guess you had to put those mules in their place. How the hell did you manage that? Well, how the hell do you manage to walk the entire continent and never have to kill anyone? I mean, that's the one thing you couldn't do, right? Kill someone. That's another crater to deal with. Anyway, I don't know how you did it, but I'm grateful. Our bots are way more useful than they used to be, and it's all down to you. Thomas Sutherland. Bots are here, but is that for the best? Sam. The bot you brought us? It's a real piece of work. It takes everything into account. Cargo type, terrain, calculates the quickest route every time. And if it does happen to run into a BT, there's no void out to worry about. If we can teach you how mules operate, it might even know how to anticipate their movements and avoid them too, which means all the risks in using human porters, the dangers you and yours face every day, well, they could be a thing of the past. Might not need, might not be a need for you to put your life on the line any longer. Time to start planning for an easy life, huh? But is it for the best, I wonder? Leaving everything to the bots? Isn't what led to drone syndrome? Isn't that what led to drone syndrome and all? And the... Uh, Better keep people involved in some respect, maybe. Same with cars back in the day. Everyone was all about self-driving vehicles, but if you ask me, human ought to be always on the wheel, am I right? Thomas Sutherland, bring me my Timefall Porter. Thanks for the delivery, bot Sam. I heard you were headed to that Timefall farm down the way. Don't know if you've heard, but the rumor has it they've been brewing beer. Maybe I've been using Timefall to speed up the process? I'd sure like to have a taste of it if that's true, and if they join the Chiral Network, I'd be able to place an order with them, wouldn't I? Of course you can't print beer, so I'll have to rely on something to get it there. Pity the bots won't be able to enjoy it with me, but I guess that's a privilege only humans can enjoy, am I right? Anyway, I'm counting on you. Thomas Sutherland, delivery time Sam. People are getting tired of waiting. What kind of porter grades you getting these days, Sam? Can't be easy trying to stand out in, the, in all those categories. 
Cargo condition, delivery volume, bridge link, all that stuff. Couldn't manage it myself. Throw my hands up in frustration. I got one piece of advice for you. Focus on delivery time. That's the most important thing when it comes to making deliveries, after all. How to improve it, though? That's the question. You probably know this already, but in case you didn't, there's one simple way you can improve your speed. It takes the shortest route. Unless, that is, an area of his infrastructure means a longer, less direct route will get you there faster. Not so simple after all, huh? You probably got a feel for picking efficient routes already, though. Most porters with your experience do. By the way, if you've, uh, if you've been feeling really confident about how quickly you can make deliveries, why not try your hand at setting a premium record? Hell, you might even enjoy it. Oh, and it's uh, not just your clients will be happy if you improve your delivery time. Your body will, too. As it grows stronger, you'll have more stamina, be able to hold your breath for longer, all sorts of good stuff. Keep at it, Sam. You're gonna be a top-ranked porter out here in no time, I just know it. Alright, the Timefall Farmer. Slaves to the wheat? Well, Sam, seems we grow more wheat than we can harvest. More than a pocket handle, even. Sam, you've been making us use that... You've been making use of that new Ultra Deck feature we shared with you. A friend of ours... A friend of ours developed it easily for us so that we could analyze the soil and choose the best spots for the growing wheat. Ours got lost in a terrorist attack on Middle Knot, though. Still. We can definitely vouch for how useful it, it was. Be sure to give it a try if you ain't already. Anywho. We've been doing some light reading to try and figure out what to do with our bumper crop, and it turns out the history of wheat's really fascinating. Did you know that it was originally a strain of grass found out in the Middle East? That's right. But it wasn't until our ancestors began to cultivate it that it really became its own. It turned hunters into farmers overnight, changing the evolution of mankind. Homo sapiens settled down in one place and stockpiled food rather than chasing it all over creation. And with stability came society, culture, religion. All courtesy of a little wheat. It wasn't a one-way street, oh no. Wheat made out like a bandit. The obscure Middle Eastern grass wound up spreading to all four corners of the globe. You could say it was wheat that used us and not the other way around. In fact, some scholars say that and uh, that we became slaves to wheat. What do you think about that, huh? Are we about to become slaves all over again? Sure hope not. The Elder. Rebuild the roads, rebuild America. I see them delivery bots are on the prowl again. Guess that means the roads are getting better out there. Used to be highways and byways running all over back in the day. There was one, the Mother Road, some called it. That was all. That was the one folks used to follow all the way west, chasing their dreams. Rebuild the roads and you rebuild the dream, is that it? Old American classic. Belief that success and prosperity are within everyone's reach? Well... I might not be so much for your UCA and your plan to rebuild the country, but if you can finally make that one work, I'll raise a glass for you, that's for sure. Timefall Farmer, best damn brew you'll ever drink. Dear Sam, another day on the road, I'll wager. Oh, you know what soothes the mind, body, and soul after a hard day's work? Delicious draught of Timefall Porter. We finally got to brewing up a batch of beer. You familiar with Porter? I am. It's one of my favorite types. Uh right next to Cerveza and Stout. It's an English ale that's been made since the 1700s. It was popular with the, con with the couriers who used to deliver loads up and down the Thames, hence the name. And the other part, well, I don't think I have to explain that. Crafted with the finest, fastest growing wheat under the time fall. So, Mr. Legendary Porter, why don't you put your feet up, enjoy a tall glass of our namesake, of your namesake. Don't think this is the end of it. We're baking bread and cooking pizzas before you know it. Just you wait. Thomas Sutherland. Time to kick back with some Timefall Porter. Thanks as always. I've sent you some Timefall Porter. The world's fastest brewed beer for Bridges' fastest runner. Hope it provides a welcome respite on a hard day. Should be waiting for you in your room. Enjoy. Film director, we used to pack into theaters. I tried toying with that tablet you brought me. Such a flimsy, cheap thing, and yet it was capable of displaying all manner of video and imagery, courtesy of my contract with Bridges. I suppose it could be useful in some respects, but the experience is ultimately 
is ultimately lacking. I long for the halcyon days when people would pack themselves into movie theaters. We'd all laugh together, cry together, jump in fright together. When the cinema was a communal experience, but then came the tyranny of the tablets, which reshaped, reshaped how media was shot all dramatic close-ups and cliffhangers to try and to draw you into the next installment. Bah. It was a far cry from the golden age of film, from when the silver screen reigned supreme. I tell you, I was born a century too late. Film director, you really are unique, ain't you? Sam Bridges. Maybe it's just my imagination, but ever since I signed a contract, I swear I've seen you at least a half dozen times here or there. Is that your hologram, perhaps? Surely it couldn't have been every time. Not when you came to see me not when you came see me bearing gifts. Nevertheless, it's hard to believe that there's only one of you running around. But it's equally hard to believe that so many others could resemble you so much. Goodness, could it have been a ghost or someone masquerading as you, perhaps? Oh dear, what have I got myself into? Well, you leave me no choice. Next time you come through. Bring that cupid of yours and make me an official member of the UCA. You're only doing that for people, correct? That should prove beyond a shadow of doubt that you're really you. Okay. Got a lot of likes. And then we'll... Fuck it. Are we gonna get the fun one? Wait, is it... What's the key to zoom? Tab, shift, alt, enter, shit. The fuck? Is it T? Yeah, it's T. Okay, he's tapping his feet. Alright, yeah. Oh, let's just pop out of the private room. Reorient ourselves with the world. Holy shit, I've almost gone for eight hours. Whoop! Sorry, I dropped my fucking... I dropped my chapstick. I'm just having fun vibing with you. Oh no, likewise. Um, give me two seconds. Woo! So yeah, no. Um, I've been having a lot of fun doing Death Stranding. Um... I'm really, really sorry for how rocky that start was. That's not usually that bad. Also, I'm aware that we're getting a bit fidgety. Um, Steam's cloud shit is like really inefficient. But yeah, no. Um, I've been having a shitload of fun with, like, just, Death Stranding is, like, kind of the perfect stream game, because it feels like a, almost like a light podcast. There's worse, yeah, but, like, there's not worse that I have to deal with on stream, usually. Um, I don't know. But yeah, no, I, I'm having fun with Death Stranding as, like, an LP. It's gonna be going for a while. But, like... We'll, we'll, we'll see about breaking it up on occasion. Oh, fuck, I have to uncheck the HelloFresh sponsorship. And I'll just do that while I'm talking. Because that sponsorship period is over. And we actually got a handsome old payout from it. HelloFresh is a good sponsor, by the way. Um, like, I actually really recommend them. Uh, who's streaming right now? Argamo Witch! You just missed the stream? I'm sorry. I've been going for almost eight hours. <laughs> Rip Goose. So yeah, we're gonna raid Argamo Witch. So for the, for, for all that shit though, like, I got nothing else for the night. Um, if you would like to support the channel more directly, there are links below wherever you're watching to things like the Stream Elements tip link, the Community Discord server, and the Throne Wishlist. Or, if you're currently in chat, they're right here. 
um, more streams to come now that I'm not falling apart. But uh, all that to say, have a good rest of your night. Thank you. That's my whole outro, but I didn't realize that I had to... There we go. So yeah, no. Stay safe now.